99% of the time, very scientific stat, they're going to do one of three things. They're going to attempt to steal credentials so they can get administrative access and then do other badness. They're going to pillage the system and look for documents or things that are of value to them. Or they're going to go ahead and scan the network and try to see what other systems they can move to. That is what an attacker is going to do most of the time. I know this because I spent a couple of years doing penetration testing myself and I kept good notes. And what I found was when I got access, these were the things I was doing every single time. Uh, and I've also investigated a lot of these cases where I see this happen. So take those three scenarios, stealing credentials, opening documents and scanning the network. Each of those is an opportunity for deception. Um, opening documents, probably the easiest one. If I know an attacker is going to be looking for documents on my system and opening them, why don't I just give them one? Why don't I make a file called passwords.xls and place that on there? The attacker is just going to think it's a file. They're either going to open it directly or they're going to pull it off the network and open it directly. When they do, there's going to be a basically a string in there that's going to call out to a web server that I own, and I will know that they've opened it, and I'll know where they opened it from on the IP address at that point. So that's the document scenario. Let's say they're going to scan the network. If I know they're going to scan the network and see what is on that same network segment, well, I can put something else on that network segment too. So I can just put a, a fake listening service, and it can be really simple. It doesn't have to be a real system. It can be Netcat listening for something. It can be something purpose-built, like an open SSH server, whatever. When they scan it and they interact with it, nobody should be doing that. I've already whitelisted all my authorized scanners, so I know it's not that. When they scan it, nobody should be doing that, so now I know that they're on the network. The final scenario, and I think this is maybe one of the coolest, if they're going to steal credentials, Probably the most popular way to do that is to try to extract them from memory using a tool like Mimikatz or something like that from LSATs. Well, if they're going to do that, why don't I just give them credentials? So at that point, I can run a process based on fake credentials, inject those into memory. Then when they dump those credentials, they'll get them. When the attacker gets the credentials, what are they going to do with them? They're going to try to use them. So I can set up Active Directory to monitor for any use of these credentials. They're not real credentials. They're not going to let them log in. So I'm monitoring for failed attempts for the specific username. When they do it, I know they're there. I know they're where they're coming from. So right there, those three techniques, you've already encompassed most of the things that the attacker is going to try to do right from that system, right off the bat. All incredibly easy to set up, all very low rates of false positives. And you mentioned once the attacker gets on the network, they have to be right every time. That's really true. Now, they just have to do one of those things that we know they're there, let alone if they do all three. Yeah. 